Welcome to this beginner level Audacity tutorial. By beginner, I mean you have little or no experience in Audacity. I will cover quite a few areas of voice recording and editing. The goal of this tutorial is to record and process the best possible voice you can get using Audacity. You can see the topics I am going to cover on the screen. All these processes follow a system, and if you understand that, good voice recording will be easy for you. You will be able to produce the quality audio you are looking for. Please note that no chapter will be given in the description. Because this video covers everything you must know as a beginner. Sometimes I get comments on basic audio editing stuff, but if they have just gone through my video once, they would know. You cannot learn anything well without putting in the time and effort needed. I hope you already have Audacity installed. Let's start with how to record the best voice using Audacity. Recording in Audacity is very simple. If you press the red record button, the recording will start. However, you have to ensure that you set all the options correctly before recording. Otherwise, your recording quality will be poor. You can see the options needed to configure for a good recording. It may seem a lot, but it is not. We will go through the list one by one. It is very important to get as much as good quality recording as possible. It makes audio editing easier, and the final audio quality depends on how good the recording is. If you are a beginner, always remember good recording means good final audio. Bad recording means bad final audio. It does not matter how much processing you do or how expensive audio software you use. Bad recording always gives bad final audio. The first thing we will see is how to select the microphone for recording. Go to the audio setup button and you can configure your recording setup from here. You will see all your connected microphones from the recording device. The currently selected microphone will have a tick mark beside it. You can see the tick mark beside the MacBook Pro microphone. If I record now, this MacBook Pro microphone will be used. If I want to select another microphone, I have to click on its name, and it will be selected for recording. I clicked on the Samson mic, and now it will be selected as the recording device. It is important to understand what name your microphone is showing. Different microphones will have a different name. For example, my Samson USB mic is showing its name as Samson C01U Pro mic. However, my Sennheiser XLR microphone does not show its name as Sennheiser. Instead, we can see Scarlett 2i2 USB. Scarlett 2i2 is my audio interface, and my Sennheiser microphone is connected to it. If I want to use my Sennheiser microphone for recording, I have to select Scarlett 2i2 USB. I will select Scarlett 2i2 USB by clicking on it. If I now check the recording device from the audio setup, we can see Scarlett has the tick mark beside it. Sometimes you may not see all your microphones in this list though it is connected to the computer. It happens when you attach the microphone while Audacity is open. To solve this, click on Reskin Audio Devices. You can also close Audacity and open it again to see the newly attached microphones. After selecting the microphone, you have to select the recording channel. There are two options for recording channels, mono and stereo. For voiceover, mono is fine. For music recording, you might want to select the stereo recording channel. With a stereo recording channel, you can add different effects on the left and right sides of the headphones. For voice recording, you will not need such effects, so select mono to keep things simple. Please note that you may see only mono as the recording channel on your Audacity. If you use a mixer for recording, you may see more than two channels. It does not matter how many channels you see here, the main point is to select mono for voice recording. Next we are going to see a bit about audio settings. We are most likely to use the default audio settings, but it is important to know something about this. Otherwise, you may waste your time on the wrong things in pursuit of a good voice recording. I want to tell you quickly about my Audacity courses. I have two Audacity courses, Audacity for Beginners and Advanced Audacity. I suggest you at least check the course curriculum. By checking the curriculum, you will know what things you need to learn about audio editing. You will find links in the description and pinned comment. Back to the recording setup we were doing. Audacity shows the same option in multiple places. You can configure from any of these places you find convenient. For example, you can see the recording device and recording channel here too. I came to these settings for the sample rate and sample format. The microphone captures audio as an analog signal and must be converted to digital data to store on a computer. Sample rate is the number of samples taken per second during the conversion. Theoretically, the more samples are taken, the more details of the audio are stored digitally. You can see two options, project sample rate and default sample rate. The project sample rate is for this project only, and the default sample rate works as the default value for any new project. You do not need to use a higher sample rate than 44.1 kHz. Still, you need to be aware of the sample rate. A lower sample rate, like 32 kHz or more down, 
may fail to capture all the good bits of your recording. So you should not choose a lower sample rate like 32 kHz. However, the opposite is not true. You will not notice any difference in audio quality with a higher sample rate, like 88 kHz or more. Instead, your file size will grow significantly and take up much disk space. You can get the best possible recording with 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz. All the fantastic MP3s you listen to are 44.1 kHz. 48 kHz is used as the sample rate of CD burning. You should choose the sample rate as 44.1 kHz unless you know a good reason for other values. I see no good reason to use any other sample rate than 44.1 kHz, so I will use it. Though 44.1 kHz is the default sample rate, I discuss this as many beginners wrongly think their bad recording is due to the sample rate. It is not the sample rate if you record audio in 44.1 kHz and still sound bad. It may be the microphone or the recording environment, or the way you are talking in the mic. The default sample format should be 32-bit float. Keep the default sample format to 32-bit float. You may not notice any difference with 24-bit or 16-bit recording. But 32-bit float recording has some advantages during the editing process. So choose 32-bit recording. Some people set 24-bit as the sample format, because some platforms ask for 24-bit encoding. Encoding and sample format are different things. We do not need to worry about those technical matters at this moment. You can always encode in the preferred 24-bit or 32-bit during export. There is no harm in recording in 32-bit float. If these talks look complicated, follow one simple rule. The sample rate is 44.1 kHz, and the sample format is 32-bit float. Most platforms accept these settings. Later when I show you the export process in detail, I will show you how to meet the requirements of any platform. During recording in Audacity, the sample rate should be 44.1 kHz, and the sample format should be 32-bit float. Period. Selecting a microphone from the audio setup button can lead to an issue where you forget to set the microphone. I suggest setting the microphone from the device toolbar, where you can always see which microphone is selected. You can find the device toolbar from View, Toolbars, and Device Toolbar. You can set which toolbar to show or hide from here. A new toolbar has been added, and you can always see which microphone is currently selected for recording. The device toolbar is one of the most useful toolbars in Audacity. But it is not shown by default, so remember to enable this toolbar from the menu. You can see the recording device and recording channel in the dropdowns. As I told you, you can do the same thing in several places. The last dropdown with the speaker icon is the playback device. It may or may not be important during recording. If you enable overdub or live monitoring, then the playback device is important during recording, otherwise you can ignore it. You will see the option named here other tracks during recording in the transport options. Previously it was named overdub. In multi-track recording, you can listen to other tracks while recording. I do not have any tick mark beside it, which means it is not enabled. There is another option of enable audible input monitoring. It means live monitoring. Live monitoring means you listen to the audio while recording. If you are using an older version of Audacity, it will be labeled as software playthrough. If I enable this option, I can listen through the playback device while recording. I do not usually use this option, but if you are interested in using such a feature, you know where it is. As a beginner, you may not be interested in such a feature, but in the future, you may look for live monitoring. Now you know where it is in case you need it. I will move to the next settings of the input level or gain staging. It is also called the recording level. A proper recording level is important for a clean audio. Audacity has two meters to monitor the audio level. The first one is the recording level monitoring meter, and the second one is the playback level monitoring meter. You can drag these meters to reposition and increase in length. It is vital to set the recording volume level properly. Post-processing your audio heavily depends on the audio level of your recording. I find it easy to read the level in a bigger meter. Click on the small microphone icon and enable silent monitoring. When you enable silent monitoring, you can see the current level in green. This way, you can set the proper input level before the recording. It helps to position your microphone and give you a hint of how loud you should talk. Your goal is to hit between minus 12 and minus 6 during the loudest peaks. Not every spoken word has to be in this range. Only the louder sounds should be in this range, ideally not exceeding minus 6. Other spoken words should cross minus 24 at least, and be around minus 18 to minus 10 most of the time. Please note you do not have to be very precise about these numbers. These are more of a guideline to achieve a good signal level that is not too hot. A hot signal means when you are hitting the red zone in the meter. 
If you record audio in the red zone, you run the risk of clipping and distortion of the voice. You will also have less headroom for post-processing. If your audio level never crosses minus 6 during recording, you will have a headroom of 6. That is a good enough headroom for post-processing. The less headroom you have, the more risk you have of voice distortion in post-processing. Alternatively, you should not aim for too much headroom. If the loudest peak never crosses minus 18, you may be recording too close to the noise floor. The terms like headroom or noise floor may seem technical, but bear with me. You will be used to these things as you progress in your learning. The main goal is to have a good enough audio signal that is easier to post-process. The recording meter also has a slider that can be used to control gain. You can drag this slider to adjust the recording level. However, this slider sometimes freezes when I screen record. It is freezing at this moment as I am screen recording let me show that from the playback meter slider, as both work similarly. You can adjust the slider and check if the meter is hitting the right place. When it hits the right place, you set the slider in that position. I usually keep the recording meter to 100%. Because even after it is 100%, I hit in the proper range. You may have to position the microphone differently if you fail to hit the correct range even after increasing the gain. You may have to come closer to the microphone, talk louder, or adjust your talking direction. You may have to increase the gain if you are not achieving such a level in the record meter. You may increase the gain through the volume knob of the microphone or audio interface. You may ask me why you have to hit the meter range of minus 12 to minus 6. Well, you can hit higher than that. But notice the maximum on this meter is zero. The closer to zero you record, the less headroom you will have in post-production. If you boost some signals in post-processing and it crosses zero, it would result in clipping or distorted sound. You can always boost your volume level after recording the audio. So keeping some headroom for post-processing is a smart thing to do. You can stop monitoring by clicking Disable Silent Monitoring. Everything is set for recording, I will press the record button now and let you hear the original recording. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software and I recommend to use Audacity as a uh, early software. I recommend using Audacity as the first software if you are in if you are new to audio editing and recording, I recommend using Audacity. Though Audacity may not be stable as other paid audio editing software, but it is a good software to start with. The recording is done, and what you see is a waveform in the timeline. The blue things are called waveform. In Audacity, we edit the waveform to get the desired result. I will get back to the details, but the first thing you need to do after recording is save the project. Saving a project is different from exporting an audio file. If you need to send this audio to somewhere, you will need an audio file. You can export it as MP3 or WAV or other audio formats. Later in this tutorial, I will discuss the details of the export process. For now, let's see how to save an Audacity project. Go to File, Save Project. You may see a warning message as this is not an audio file. You can only open this file in Audacity, not in any other audio playing apps. I disabled that message, so that is not shown in my Audacity. If you see that warning, it is a harmless message. Give your project a name and choose a location to save. You will be able to open this project at a later time and work from the last saving point. Remember, Audacity does not have an autosave feature. So you have to save any change you want to persist explicitly. Please note that the Audacity project is an OP3 file that can only be opened in Audacity. I will browse to the location where I saved the Audacity file. You will get used to these things once you do it a couple of times. Here is my Audacity project. I can close the current Audacity and reopen the project from the project file. You can see the same recording again. You can play the audio from any position in the timeline. Click on a place in the timeline from where you want to play the audio and press the spacebar. Alternatively, you can use the play button. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software. You may be wondering why the audio sounds too low compared to the current narration. Well, here the post-processing comes into play. In the next part we will see how to navigate around the timeline and waveform. Then we will see how to get the best possible final audio from this recording.